Y'all planning for this? Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Reading Time with Jarvis. Normally in this episode, I highlight other books and resources that I have read that have made an impact on my practice. But today I want to highlight for you my own book, Deliver Massive Value. And actually what I want to do is play for you a snippet or two from my audio book, the sections that have had the biggest impact on my practice. Now, obviously, they've all had an impact on my practice or they would not have made it to the audiobook. But I wanted to give you a taste of the audiobook so that hopefully and most importantly, you can take these lessons that have had such an impact on my practice and implement them in your own practice. Because as always, it is only the things that you implement, only the action you take that counts. Enjoy. For too many of the early years of my career, I was stuck in an epic catch-22. On the one hand, I desperately wanted and needed new clients, but on the other, I was terrified of actually meeting with prospects. While I had dozens of failed prospect meetings, one in particular is seared into my memory. After presenting my most elaborate financial plan, generated by financial planning software I had purchased with borrowed money, the prospect explained with all sincerity that while all this information looked interesting, it wasn't at all clear to him why he would hire me, let alone pay me. I don't think he meant it as an insult, but it crushed my spirit. All I could think to say was, well, I guess I didn't do a good job explaining my value, to which he responded, pretty much, so please tell me why I should hire you. Still not knowing what to say, I offered to send him a letter explaining my value. Then he left. Now, in case you were wondering, I never sent the letter, and he never called back. Despite the emotional pain of this meeting, I'll forever be grateful for that experience as it started the journey that led me to the nearly perfect prospect process I've outlined for you in this chapter. Why, you might be asking, is it only nearly perfect? Any system can be improved, and I'm always looking for improvements. With the process I've perfected after hundreds of prospect meetings over the years, you'll be able to land every qualified prospect as a client, and of equal importance, anyone who is not qualified will walk away still thinking you are an amazing advisor. Prospect process mishap. Too much or too little. One of the first questions I ask advisors when coaching them on prospecting is, what is your current prospect process? Many advisors tell me I don't have a prospect process. I explain that they do, in fact, have a prospect process. It just may not be an intentional one. This approach leaves most advisors with very few clients and lots of rejection. Why? Because you are essentially relying on the prospect liking you more than anyone else which means when they say no, it's literally because they don't like you enough as a person. Ouch. On the other end of the spectrum, many advisors give me a long-winded, nonsensical explanation that I'm not sure even they understand and I've stopped paying attention to before they finish the summary of their process. If you can't explain your process in one breath, it's too long. Your only success will come when the prospect is so exhausted from your process that the thought of going through it again with another advisor has them signing up out of sheer desperation, which I suppose is one way to get a yes. What makes a prospect process successful? By now, you know why having a system is so important. By codifying every potential turning point into an easy to understand system, you can ensure that every last detail is focused on giving your prospect exactly the information they need, exactly when they need it. Make sure your prospect process accomplishes these three things for your client. Number one, establishes value. Number two, eliminates the fear of rejection. Number three, sets expectations. Establishes value. Lots of different marketers and a bunch of those experts see this as a funnel, but in my office, we see the entire process as a way to help people make an educated and informed decision about our firm. Luckily, 
This strategy sounds amazing from a marketing standpoint, so it tends to be an easy sell. When a prospect calls my office, I say, we follow this process to help you make an educated and informed decision about our firm or any other firm that you talk to. Everybody loves that. I'm telling them up front that I won't give them the hard sell, which puts all of us on the same page. And the fact that I'm giving them a free education in vetting a financial advisor means I'm already delivering value from the moment they walk in the door. Eliminates the fear of rejection. I created the prospect process to be more confident and effective in expressing my own value. In doing so, I found one unexpected benefit that made me even more passionate about the systems than I already was, if that was possible, because I stopped worrying if people were going to say yes or no. At the end of the day, it didn't really matter to me if they became my client because I knew it wasn't about me, it was about the system. They either fit into it or they don't. And if they don't, that leaves room for the next client who does. No harm, no foul. Setting expectations. There's so much obvious value packed into the prospect process that a lot of times clients sometimes skip important steps and sign up right away. But by sticking to the prospect process, you're able to build in multiple points of contact where you can keep explaining what you're doing and why and reminding them what's coming next. Throughout the prospect process, you're preempting concerns, letting clients know what to expect, and preparing them for what it's like to be your client and to follow your winning systems. Doesn't make it look too easy. On a recent trip to Florida, I started getting terrible earaches. I went to the local clinic, And after the nurse had collected all of my information and filled out the endless forms, the doctor walked in and said, it's TMJ. You grind your teeth at night. You need surgery. Have a nice day. Say what? First of all, I had no idea whether I should trust this guy's assessment. He may have had a white lab coat and a stethoscope, but his answer was so immediate that it felt like he'd picked it out of his hat. He didn't even hint that there might have been a process behind his thinking. And even if he was right, the almost automatic ease with which he dispensed his advice made me question the value of it. It just seemed too easy, and I walked away from the encounter annoyed that I had to pay him. Side note, after leaving the office, I googled how to eliminate TMJ pain and found a list of exercises that ended up making a huge difference. Thanks for nothing, Doc. It's easy for financial planners to do the same thing for our clients. We make financial planning look too easy and then we're surprised when people don't want to hire us or pay our fees. But we know the same things doctors know. When you know what you're doing, it's easy to make things look easy. The hard part is reminding people how complex the system really is and how good we really are at our jobs. I hope you've enjoyed this snippet from Deliver Massive Value, the Financial Advisor's Guide. If you want to listen to the rest of the book, you can go to amazon.com to buy the Audible, Or you can visit my website, matthewjarvis.com, to download the first two chapters as a PDF, to buy the paperback version, which I'd be glad to sign for you, or to download a PDF version of the entire book. So that's matthewjarvis.com or amazon.com if you want the Kindle or Audible version. Happy planning. Hold on before we go. Something that you need to know. This isn't tax, legal, or investment advice. That isn't our intent. The information designed to change lives. Financial planning can make you thrive. Start today, don't think twice. Be a better husband, father, mother, and wife. The perfect RIA.